Well, West Ada School Board isn't the only one meeting tonight. Central District Health is meeting well, right now, and the Boise School District Board of Trustees will also meet tonight. 2020 will go down as the year we saw a shortage of toilet paper and cleaning supplies, but an endless supply of board meetings. Am I right? But I digress. What are they likely going to discuss tonight is why, with a step back into the red category, why schools will continue with what they are doing right now. Meaning, yes, you're in the red, but keep going like you're in the yellow. Because health officials, for the most part, as we just heard, aren't seeing the exposure or at least the positive cases pop up in the schools. Kids don't seem to be getting lots of illness from school when they are practicing the things that we are emphasizing here. The social distancing, the hand washing, and the wearing of masks. We are very certainly concerned about this and we're watching this week to week. But so far, uh, the schools have not been uh, a big source of, 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 of COVID cases. And the stats, well, they show that. Based on the latest numbers compiled by the state, the October 9th report shows only eight schools out of hundreds across the entire state have positive COVID cases that rank in the double digits. You can see them right here on your screen. And looking at area high schools, that would be Fruitland, who has a total of 21. Payette High School has had 16. Mountain View and Emmett have had 15. Only two of those, though, are in Ada County. So just a sampling from Ada, we're looking at Bora. They've had seven. Capital, BK, just one. Centennial and Rocky, they've had two. CUNA has had five. Meridian High School has had seven positive COVID cases. So what does that mean about sporting events and other after-school events? Well, in that same recommendation letter sent out last week by CDH and being considered right now, the board had a paragraph toward the end that said youth extracurricular activities can be high risk and are leading to a number of exposures and quarantines. And if those activities can't be done during category three without physical distancing or face coverings and those things they can't be enforced, well, they should be put on pause until they return to category two. It was another topic brought up this morning. I mean, I think any events where people are packed tightly together and not wearing masks, it's concerning that the virus could very well easily spread. I think, you know, we've had uh, at different points during the summer, some uh, relatively large events that were outside where we didn't see uh, definitive evidence that there was a widespread spread of the virus. But again, I think that was more luck than skill. I think uh, we're continue to be at risk, particularly as the weather gets colder and everything is moving inside. Uh, and uh, if people are not wearing masks, then again, yeah, I see just unfettered spread of the virus. So will they press their luck or will they put them on pause? Well, so far, the pause thing isn't going to work out. Boise School District told us this afternoon they work closely with CDH and have planned to move forward in offering sports and athletics while in Category 3. However, starting Thursday, Boise School District will no longer be allowing fans at any of their sporting events, inside or out, for both high school and junior high school. They'll also be sending their school teams, or their soccer teams, I should say, to North Idaho for the state tournament coming up next weekend. We've not heard back from CUNA School District, and West Ada told us they will know more after their meeting tonight, which, again, starts in about an hour from now. But for the time being, being pushed back into the red category has not really put a pinch on school district plans.